All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. It's Matt here from Chill TCG. Today, uh, we're going to be taking a look at the top 16 deck lists from Chill Series number 39, uh, which was our 450 player tournament, which wrapped up this past Wednesday. Uh, before we get into that, I want to let you guys know that Chill Series number 40, uh, the season finale for season number four of Chill Series, is actually this Wednesday. So, uh, really excited for the season to come to an end, although it was an absolutely fantastic season. I want to give a big thanks to PTCG Ozone and everybody who participated over the last 10 events. It really means a lot to me. It was uh, a great time, and uh, we will have some announcements coming soon about Season 5, uh, which will be coming up uh, right after this week when Season 4 ends here at Chill Series number 40. So it's your last chance to qualify for the Invitational Tournament, uh, which is a nice, you know, 32-player, 500-pack uh, prize pool event. Everybody gets prizing. It's free to enter. You know, you just got to have to qualify, which, of course, you know, a lot of you might have already qualified already, but this is your last chance uh, here in Chill Series number 40. So definitely go check that out. Link to register will be down in the description below. Super excited for it. It's going to be a lot of fun. All right, now let's head on over to Chill Series number 39. Uh, if we can find it here real quick. There we go. 455 players. Not too shabby. And, um, all right. So, yeah. We'll get we'll get right into the deck lists because that's what uh, everybody wants to see. The format, as we can see here, especially looking at top 16, uh, it's really turned into a dark, heavy format for a while. Uh, you know, Shadow Rider Calyrex was just kind of dominating. And it still has, of course, been doing really well. You guys can see that it ended up winning this tournament. Uh, but things like Eternatus, Malamar... Um, and I believe Mewtwo, Dark Box, things like that are, are becoming increasingly more and more popular, uh, more and more successful as those lists become more refined. Um, and uh, clear counters to things like Eternatus kind of fade away. I know Zapdos is a really clear cut counter against Eternatus, but people have just started to play it less and less since Etern became less and less popular. But uh, the more people that remove Zapdos from their from their lists, especially Shadow Rider and whatnot, uh, Etern comes back and uh, ends up doing pretty well. Either way, let's start off at number 16. We have Ryan Mefford here, and he was playing ADP Moltres, it seems. Uh, so let's take a look at his ADP Moltres list. Uh, okay, I like it. So, um, you know, nothing too, too crazy as it stands out to me. Uh, we've got two Moltres, two ADP, two Zacian. Uh, we have two Dedene, one Crobat, one Eldegoss as our draw support. Uh, we also have a Galarian Zapdos V in there as a, as a great option, especially if you're going against Eternatus. Uh, I can take some easy four prize cards in one attack with that Galarian Zapdos, so definitely good for sure when you're playing against Eternatus. It's really good in ADP overall. Um, and we have one Eldegoss, of course, with... Um, I already said all the guys. Yes, yeah, so we have uh, Aegislash to tech for the Desi, which is still really popular right now. Still does really well in a lot of tournaments, and we have a Mawile GX. So, not you know nothing too, too crazy or out of the ordinary with this list. Uh, we're not running Hammers. We're kind of going more on the consistency side of stuff with three Energy Switch, four Saucer. Uh, we have the one Skyla in the list, which is actually something that's been played in ADP for a while now. Um, and I quite like it, actually. Um, four Boss, four Research, two Marnie uh, on top of the Skyla. So, quite a bit of supporters, more so than normal, I think, with ADP. And uh, Quick Balls, two Cherish Balls. Um, we, of course, are running two Switch and one uh, Escape Rope on top of two Air Balloons. So still plenty of switching options in here. Uh, we do have a Tool Scrapper, which is probably his, like the 60th card he threw in the list. Um, and one Big Charm as well. So uh, everything you kind of need or expect from ADP at this point in the game. Um, and all stuff that uh, I, I do think is actually quite good if you're going to be playing ADP at this point. Uh, nowadays, we're going to be seeing Viridian Forest in ADP, especially with the different types of basic energy that are in the list. Um, we're running things like Moltres, Zapdos, ADP, uh, Zacian. That's four different energy types that we actually really need to use in the list. Uh, but we do have four Aurora energies in here, uh, which functions all the same. And it also works to discard some of those other basic energy, which we like to have in the discard pile. Things like the Metal Energies and the Dark Energies, which we can get back with Metal Saucer and Dire Flame Wing with Moltres. So uh, good to see. Five Metal, four Aurora, three Dark Energies, and one Water. That one water, of course, it's going to be used for ADP, but it, you know you can also use Aurora Energy. Uh, it's just searchable with Viridian Forest. So uh, the new ADP lists are definitely pretty refined. They're definitely really figured out at this point, but they've been really successful. Um, and I believe we just had ADP win uh, the big GG Tour tournament. So especially in a best of three format, this list and, and this archetype actually seems to be probably one of the best lists in our in our format right now. Uh, ADP is not going away anytime soon. It's just inherently a really powerful card, a really powerful ability. Uh, with Altered Creation GX and, you know, the ability to incorporate things like Moltres and Zapdos and Seishi and all in one list makes it incredibly powerful. Uh, so I like it. I do. Big shout out to Ryan. Uh, definitely somebody who plays quite often in Chill Series. He's a great player. Uh, great guy as well. Next up, we have Manu Pango. Manu Pango, maybe is how you say it. Uh, he's from Chile, and he was playing Shadow Rider. Uh, we're going to take a look at uh, quite a few E-turns. Um, one, two, three, four, five E-turns to be exact. How many Shadow Riders do we have? We have one. 
two, three. So only three Shadow Riders to take a look at today. Uh, but perhaps we might see some variants between all of those lists. Um, and uh, this one is uh, cool. This is a Shadow Rider list that kind of does it all. Uh, for those of you who have who've played in this format or watched my videos uh, the last few weeks, we know that there's probably three main kind of uh, cornerstones to Shadow Rider these days. Excuse me. Uh, one of them is going to be Alcremie VMAX, which is a great partner in Shadow Rider Adornment. Uh, accelerates energies. Uh, it just fits really well with Shadow Rider because they kind of do the same thing. They build up energies rapidly, and then they do more damage the more energy that's on your board. So they both go together really well. Uh, Alcremie is also not weak to dark, so that's also an advantage as well. And... Um, and the, the next one is going to be Gengar Mimikyu, which you'll see in almost every Shadow Rider list. It's mainly in there for the Horror House GX ability so we can take a, a turn away from our opponent. Uh, pretty much just getting us an extra turn in the early game can really be the difference to start stacking up energies um, and, and getting into those Calyrex Maxes, which is so important uh, when you're playing this list. So that's another one. And then we also uh, have the Trevenant and Dustamar, which is becoming uh, less and less popular, I think, in Shadow Rider lists, but it's still proven to be extremely good. Uh, so you're being able to set up a Trevenant on turn two pretty consistently with Nightwatch. Um, you know, and then, and then start attacking with Nightwatch. Um, it, it's just absolutely incredible. Uh, we're not going to be using Pale Moon GX that often, but I guess it is another uh, tool that we have in the list, and, and everything else in here is pretty normal. Uh, lots of switching options, which is interesting. So one switch for Air Balloon. 15 basic energies is quite a bit, especially, um, you know, in El you know, well, it makes sense because Al Creamy is in here, so we're kind of going through energies a little bit quicker. Um, but no way to get those energies back or out of our discard pile. No Energy Recycler, no Ordinary Rod, which you'll typically see in an Al Creamy list, but we're just running a 1-1 lineup so we're probably just have it in there to use that attack once which is probably going to be towards the end of the game anyway uh so i like it for research for marnie for boss and then once sonia sonia can actually be really good to use on your first turn going second um if you want to you know populate your board uh, with as many shadow riders as you possibly can so i quite like that uh that card in here uh four fog crystals four evo incense for quick ball that's going to be our way that we search for cards and i do quite like that i mean we have five evolution pokemon um, and we kind of draw cards really rapidly with this list. So four Evolution Incense is practically just drawing into another, uh, you know, one of your VMAX Pokemon. So uh, it is actually quite good. And um, yeah, it's, uh, there we go. A little bit of everything here in this Shadow Rider list. But we all know Shadow Rider at this point. Um, it's just kind of cool to see exactly how people are playing it. Uh, now we're going to dive into the heavy uh, Eternatus count, and uh, we've taken a look at Eternatus in this new format a few times, uh, but this is Ricardo Toddy. He got 14th from Brazil, another great player, a uh, very active player as well. And he was playing Eternatus, and I think there's really only two ways that people are playing Eternatus at this point, um, and they're both really similar. They're both going to be utilizing Galarian Moltres V, which is the best Dark-type Pokemon right now to accelerate energies. Uh, it is from our discard pile, but it is still an, a phenomenal way to get those extra energies on your board, and we are running Weavile GX, especially or in this list specifically, to move those dark energies from our Moltres to our Eternatus, or vice versa, or any other way that we possibly could want to. Um, and that's, you know, really the upside with this list, is, um, you know, we have energy acceleration with Moltres, and we have flexibility to move those energies with Weavile, and we also have a great, uh, one of the best attackers in the game, if not the best attacker in the game, with Eternatus VMAX. It's also, uh, you know, has 340 HP, which is pretty good as well. Um, and we also have the Cheryl, and I like Cheryl when we're playing Weavile. If we bust that Cheryl out when we need to, we fully heal our E-turn. It uh, can really be the difference when you're winning some games. It's absolutely insane. Uh, a little bit hard to find this card when you need it, but we have uh, the ability to draw cards pretty rapidly here with four Crobats in the list. So, um, yeah, I mean, we're running six Evolution Pokemon in total, which is quite a bit, but we have four Pokemon Communications and four Great Balls on top of four Quick Balls. So we have a lot of ways to find the Pokemon that we need to. Uh, we're running Heavy Chaotic Swell because we do not like Path to the Peak. Um, and, uh, yeah, four boss, four Marnie, three research, one Cheryl. It's a great list. Not a lot, uh, you know, to talk about with this. We've seen it before, but this is, you know, really the baseline for what Eternatus has become at this point. And it is probably, uh, definitely one of the best decks in our format. And if no one's really playing Zapdos anymore, I expect to see Etern doing a lot better as time goes on. But I think if Etern does well, everyone's just going to include Zapdos. It's just one of those things. Uh, but at either way, shout out to Ricardo. I like the list. Next up, we have Magui Master. Mag Magui? Mag Magui? I don't know. Mag this guy here at 13th from the U.S. Um, and he was also playing Eternatus. So, again, a lot of dark types this week. Um, and this happens to be the ex almost the exact same. Uh, list. I think that the only differences here, uh, if I'm looking correctly, are is we're playing two Yveltals, where last list was not playing two Yveltal. Uh, I don't remember if the Weavile, Sneasel, Sneevil, Sneasel lineup was the same. I don't know if it was 2-2. Two, two. Maybe it was. But the Yveltals are new. Uh, we're running three boss instead of four. Uh, actually, was this... 
yeah, so we're running higher of the draw supporters and one less boss. Um, and it looks like we're running one less Great Ball, one less Energy. So I uh, kind of moved very few things around for this list, but, uh, you know, altogether, uh, definitely very similar between the two. And you can kind of see, you know, how you can change the, the, the tiny bits of, of a list to kind of fit your preference when you're going into a tournament like this. But for the most part, they're almost exactly the same. I do like Yveltal because uh, it is a free pivot. It's a free retreat pivot. So if something gets KO'd, you can go to Yveltal um, and then kind of play out your hand and then determine what you want to go into uh, for free after that. So I, I like Yveltal for that reason. It's also a really nice basic Pokemon. Um, and uh, yeah, very cool. Eternatus, man. It's back. Etern is back. Uh, for sure. But next up, we have Z, C, 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 Z, C, C, uh, is his name. Uh, he's from Taiwan. And he was playing Malamar. Uh, so let's take a look here. This is actually going to be the single strike Malamar, uh, which is really, really cool. Uh, it's a rapid strike. Or not, do I, I always say single strike Malamar. It's single prize, but it's rapid strike. Uh, hopefully that doesn't confuse anybody. Uh, it confuses me sometimes for sure. But uh, yeah, so it's, you know, it's Malamar, uh, the new rapid strike one. With, it's probably one of the best single prize attackers in our game right now. Uh, has kind of taken over what Blacephalon was. I mean, I don't know if Blacephalon is, is worse than this, but no one seems to be playing Blounds anymore at this point. This is kind of the new, the new fresh, uh, interesting version of, of that archetype in some ways. Uh, but we're, you know, we're running a lot of Rapid Strike cards in our list because that's how we do extra damage. We have four of the Sobbles, two of the Rapid Strike uh, Inteleons, but we also have three Shady Dealings, Drizz Isles, one in, uh, Shady Dealing um, Inteleon as well, so that's going to be a good dry engine for us. We are running a 3-2 Octillery Remoraid Rapid Strike lineup, and uh, we have Mew, Oracorio, GX, and Fion, uh, which are all really good cards in this list as well. Fion's going to force our opponent to switch into a different Pokemon. That can be really useful as well because Malamar likes to take big one-hit KOs. A Mew to protect all of our single prizes on our bench, and then Oracorio to draw extra cards for us uh, when one of our single prize Pokemon get knocked out. Oracorio is really good in lists like this because, of course, um, you know we want our opponent to KO us six times, and if we're drawing uh, three cards every time that happens, that's... A lot of cards we get to draw throughout the game. Uh, four Karinas, which is a great draw supporter, which is a Rapid Strike card. So that's another card that we can utilize. And then we have uh, two Tower of Waters and three Spiral Energy. So not a crazy amount of Rapid Strike cards, actually, in the list. Uh, but all cards that uh, you probably should be able to kind of shuffle through. All the other cards, honestly, you're going to want to play early game. So you get them in your discard pile. And then the rest of the cards are, are ones that you kind of keep shuffling through your deck. And we're going to make sure that we can draw some more cards with Octillery, Shady Dealings. Um, you know, things like that, or Choreo GX, um, and, uh, you know, once we pile up all those cards in our hand every turn, we're just going to be able to, to do consistent damage through Malamar, um, and that's like, going to be a really powerful, uh, list, and it is a really powerful list, as we saw, it got, uh, what is it, 12th, or 13th in this tournament, uh, 12th, yeah, so... I like it. Uh, really, the only single prize archetype that's been doing well right now, other than Decidueye. Uh, Decidueye is kind of different, and it is single prize archetype, but it's it's not really like an attacker per se. It's really like a lock. It's like a you know a way to, to lock your opponent out. But uh, yeah, our you know Malamar is super cool. Uh, at eleventh, we have Longboard Guy, and I don't know where he's from. He didn't list, but he did get eleventh in the tournament with Eternatus. And let's uh, let's take a look here. Eternatus is probably a list that a lot of people are interested in because they probably already have a lot of these cards. They've been out for a while, um, and it is still a top-tier list, and you really only need minimal uh, inclusions into this list to uh, to improve it. This is a bit different. This is actually Etern Hammers uh, thrown in here, and we do have Moltres V, but we don't actually have a way to move those Dark Energies from Moltres to Eternatus, and that's actually really, really interesting. Um, but yeah, so... This is more of a classic E-turn list, really. I mean, there's nothing here that's actually very different. Um, now, we're running two Big Charms, which I do find to be really interesting. Uh, we have one Spiritomb, Yveltal, one Moltres. So it very much is classic E-turn with hammers. Like, there's nothing too too different about that. Um, probably increasing your ADP matchup. Uh, I like Big Charm because it's a, it's a, honestly a direct counter to Zapdos. Um, at least in Shadow Rider, because Zapdos does 170 for weakness, that's 340. But if you have Big Charm, you're out of range of actually even getting KO'd from Zapdos. So kind of nullifies the whole ability that Zapdos can can kind of, you know, do when you're running it in Shadow Rider, at least, to tech for E-Turn. So I like the Big Charms, for sure. And um, three Crashing Hammers. So yeah, the list is pretty funny. Uh, but it did really well. I mean, an E-Turn is a really good list, especially, like I said, if people aren't preparing for it. If they're not playing Zapdos, it's going to do well, even if you're not running kind of the fancy new Moltres Weavile version, or any energy switch for that matter. So kind of just classic E-Turn with hammers, but we have a Moltres thrown in there, and uh, it just happened to do pretty well. So shout out to Longboard Guy. Uh, that's a funny name as well. Uh, Raffer, Raffer32, this guy is from Indonesia. 
So lots of variety. Uh, we have a lot of uh, of Taiwan uh, players that were successful this week in top 16, which is cool to see. But Raffer here, he's from Indonesia. Uh, he was playing ADP here. This might be more of a, a classic ADP list. Um, and it is. So this is actually ADP Zacian still, uh, I would call it. Uh, we're not utilizing things like Moltres or Galarian Zapdos. Uh, but we do have some things in here that are still pretty interesting. We have a Mew, uh, which is going to be really good in the Urshifu matchup and also the Blaziken Zorora matchup, even though that list uh, doesn't see as much player success these days. But some things I want to note is we are running the Peony, uh, uh, you know, kind of engine here where we're able to search our, our card for or our deck for, what is it, two trainer cards or one trainer card uh, and put it into our hand. But, the, but you discard your hand to play this card um, and um, very powerful. It's a very powerful supporter, but uh, it goes really well with Cricket Tune because then we get to draw until we have three cards or two cards in our hand. Uh, so it's kind of like a plus three draw after we use Peony and we get to find the card that we need. So I really do like uh, this combination here, and it is extremely interesting. It did really well in the tournament as well. So, you know, I might be... Um, this might be a list to look out for. I know a lot of people are hype playing like ADP Toolbox with, with Moltres and Zapdos and Zacian and all that good stuff, but it's just straight ADP Zacian. But Peony is a really good card. We saw it see play early on in this format when it came out in ADP. It's kind of seen less play, but it goes really well with Cricket Tune, and I really do like that. A lot of the things in here um, are pretty standard. There is quite a bit of one ofs in the list. Like we have one Rusted Sword, uh, one Great Catcher, one Escape Rope. These are all things that we can kind of find with Peony. Uh, I like the two Echoing Horn as well. Those are going to be really good cards here in ADP. Really useful cards. And uh, yeah, I mean, this is a cool list. It is. I mean, it's more of a classic ADP version, but it's kind of like the new flavor. Uh, kind of like when people were playing Clay, when they were playing Clay DP back in the day. Um, this is kind of similar to that, where it's still ADPization, but, you know, the draw engine and sort of the, the core of the list and how we play it is just a little bit different. Uh, but I actually do like that. I, I, I like this one. So it's something different, at least, uh, which is cool to see. So shout out to Raffer. Big shout out to him. Uh, we have Raxel GT. I think that's how you say it. Raxel? Raxel? Uh, from Guatemala, and he was playing E-Turn. This is our second highest placing E-Turn of the, of the week. Um, and this is actually Galarian Weezing E-Turn. Which was another archetype uh, or variant of Etern that saw more play early on in the format, uh, but it's cool that people are still playing it. Weezing is really, really good. It turns off all abilities of all of the other Pokemon uh, in play when it's in the active spot. So it's going to turn off a lot of things. Like it'll turn off Zapdos. So Zapdos needs like it, like it'll still need the full four energies to attack, which is really good. Uh, it's going to turn off things like Dedenne, Crobat, uh, Zacian, all, any good you know card. Uh, that has abilities like it's not it's they're not going to work I think uh, if Galarian Weezing is in the active um, it might only affect your opponent as well yeah so it's your opponent's Pokemon uh, in play so you can still use your Pokemon with abilities if you have uh, Weezing out there um, and of course we have things like Eternatus, Crobat, Moltres and, and Alipard V and and Zigzagoon so really all of our other Pokemon have abilities and we can still use those abilities but our opponent cannot use theirs if Galarian Weezing is in the active spot. I actually really like this. Um, uh, it's a different version of E-Turn. We have XP Share to conserve energy as well, which I, which I think is kind of cool. Two Energy Switch. Uh, an Energy Switch in E-Turn with Moltres, you know, works out. Because we're not running Weavile, but we would like to be able to move some energies around. Uh, so that's what the Moltres and the Energy Switch are kind of doing there. Everything else in here, though, pretty normal. One Reset Stamp with, with two Swell and nine energy so now with e-turn it looks like people are still playing nine ten energies in their list uh but uh definitely more of a rapid energy uh i guess acceleration build when you have moltres and things like that and galarian wheezing can be incredibly um you know disruptive of a card so i i do really like wheezing um and uh yeah it's pretty good you could you could run a wheezing deck with path to the peak as well it wouldn't work in e-turn of course but you know that would be kind of like a double combo so our opponent would have to go through two different things uh they'd have to like boss away uh wheezing and then also play a, a, a supporter to get rid of ability so that could be really cool uh wheezing is a really powerful card um and it's awesome to see it see play um and uh yeah very cool that might be my favorite e-turn list so far and then next up after all of those e-turns uh we have zhang Wai from also taiwan and he was playing shadow rider so let's see what his shadow rider list looks like after this we have one more to look at um and uh okay so this is actually really quite similar to the, that first one that we saw. Uh, a couple of differences. Um, we're running a Solgaleo and Lunala GX instead of the Trev Noir. And I think that we run Solgaleo and Lunala mainly because it can do a lot of damage for four energies. Um, and I believe it's GX attack can do some good damage as well. So kind of like a consistent energy attacker or high energy count attacker. 
that's a psychic type so potentially it was really good in this list i don't know if it's still worth running i think gengar mimikyu might have more importance or more use in shadow rider because shadow rider v max like it does a lot of damage outright so i don't know if you really need to utilize this card um in the list but everything else in here is pretty much the same uh we do have one reset stamp and an ordinary rod to get those pokemon and those energies back out of our discard pile and um we're running two path to the peaks with 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 training court um, and we've seen this a lot where people run Marshadow and Path to the Peak so that we can put Path in play. Our opponent cannot use abilities, but then we can get rid of Path to the Peak with Marshadow whenever we want to to utilize our abilities. And then we can kind of continue with our turn. So it's a really good combination. Marshadow is also really easily searchable between four Fog Crystals and four Quick Balls. Path to the Peak, you know, it's really powerful. So it's seen play in things like Shadow Rider, even though Shadow Rider really does rely on abilities. Um, but I think after rotation, when Marshadow rotates, no one's going to be playing Path to the Peak in any of their own lists that run abilities. Uh, but uh, it's going to be interesting after rotation because there's no Chaotic Swell, no Mars Shadow. Uh, everybody's going to be running like four of their own stadium so that they can at least just get rid of Path to the Peak if, if it is in play. Um, and that's really going to be the only way to deal with it, I think. But yeah, uh, different. It's a little bit different. I mean, you don't ever really see Solgaleo and Lunala in Shadow Rider, so that is cool, um, at least. And uh, yeah, 14 basic energies, training court. Um, so yeah. I like it. Training Court's good because it does put an energy from your discard pile into hand, which is really good, especially if we want a Quick Ball uh, or a Dedenne and discard maybe some Psychic Energies. It's nice to, to be able to get them out of the discard pile, but directly into your hand. Um, and we have Ordinary Rod as well to put them back in, in, your, in your deck. So I like this. I like that one a lot. Interesting. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below about Solgaleo uh, and Lunala in, uh, in Shadow Rider. That is uh, different at least. And uh, we have Math Louis, Math Lu, Math Louis, Liu. I don't know how to say his name. Uh, he's also from Taiwan and he was our highest placing Eternatus VMAX of the tournament. I believe there's one more dark type list above him, but this is going to be kind of a combination of all the Etern lists that we saw pr previously. It is Moltres, Weavile, Etern, uh, but we do have a Lipard thrown in here and we do have the Eveltal. Uh, Cheryl's still in here and we actually have a Phoebe, uh, which is going to be really good against Luke Metal, which is still a really, really good list it's a really good archetype in this format uh, we're not gonna i don't think see it in this top 16 for this week but it has been doing really really well um and it's something that you definitely want to look out for if you are playing eternatus a uh, 100 so the phoebe that's kind of a throwback as well great ball quick ball pokecom and uh the pal pad which again kind of goes hand in hand with phoebe but it can also be really good to put cheryl back in your list or boss or whatever it is uh you want to kind of put back into your deck uh two air balloon and I also kind of think Air Balloon is good in E-Turn right now. We can slap that on a Weavile GX or a lot of our Moltres. A lot of our other Pokemon to kind of give them also uh, free retreat to make them one of those free retreat pivots like Yveltal. Uh, two Chaotic Swell, 10 Energy. So like I said, kind of a, a mix between all the other E-Turn lists that we saw uh, earlier. Uh, a couple things that I just really want to note is Phoebe, Palpad might be useful, especially if Luke Metal is really common. Uh, the Lipard, if you don't know what Lipard does, you just play, it's like, um, it's similar to like the other like Crobat when you play it, the abil ability goes into play when you put it on your bench, except um, you don't draw any cards from it, but you just, it's like Tool Scrapper, uh, but it's a Pokemon. And Pokemon is a, lot, a Pokemon's a lot easy, uh, more easily searched in this list with things like Quick Ball, Great Ball, Pokecom. So it's, it's pretty much Tool Scrapper, but it's more easy to find. Over, it has a lot of overall general purpose. It might be in here for a specific reason. Again, I can't really, you know, determine that right off, right off the bat. Uh, maybe I should know that. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, Lipard is really cool. It's also a Dark-type Pokemon, and it's a basic. So it's just another Pokemon to put on your bench, which E-Turn does like to do. Um, it would turn out. And we're getting into top eight now as well. I didn't, know, I didn't notice that, but from Zhang up, we're now into the top eight players. Um, and next up is going to be the Peeves, and he is playing... Uh, Ice Rider. So this is the first time we've actually seen Ice Rider so far in the video. Um, the next highest placing Ice Rider, see we did have some Luke Metals down here. The next highest placing one was Marco Cifuentes at 21st. And he was playing the Mincino version. This was our only one in top 16. At number 6, he did make top 8 and he was playing uh, Inteleon. Ice Tray is what the, uh, I think what the kids call it uh, these days. But uh, yeah, so um, I guess it's a little bit different because we're running two quick shooting Inteleons. Typically, um, I think that uh, Inteleon Ice Rider is just running the Shady Dealings, but, you know, it's very similar. Um, you know, we, we have the, the, the card search, the draw engine with Shady Dealings, but the quick shooting Inteleon is really good. We can get one or two of those, one or two of those on our bench, and that increases the damage that we can do uh, every turn. So definitely going to be really useful. It's a good card. It sees a lot of play. Uh, Crobat and a Marsh Shadow, which is interesting. Uh, the Marsh Shadow is very interesting. 
I guess that's because we have Path to the Peak in the list, but we might want to get rid of a Path to the Peak so that we can play Crobat. I don't know. It's a little bit different, but similar to what we saw in Shadow Rider. Um, and it's also, it's good, I suppose. I mean, he got like sixth in the tournament, so... There you go. Uh, four Melanie, two Boss, two Marnie, one Leon. The Leon is actually really cool to increase our damage. So uh, potentially, right, 250 from Shadow Rider for the full max Lance uh, attack damage. Uh, plus 40 from the two quick shooting Inteleon, so that's 290. Plus 30 from Leon. Technically, we're at 320 damage. So it's a kind of a far stretch, but uh, we technically do have the ability to one-shot uh, anything in, uh, or mostly everything that we might be going up against. And... Um, I guess it's a little bit more consistent than you might think because we have shady dealings to search out for the Leon. So if we're able to get a couple of these quick shooting Inteleons out uh, and then we have a third that we can, you know, utilize for shady dealings, you know, then that's going to work out. Uh, no scoop up net in here, but we do have quick balls, level balls, Evo incense, uh, capacious bucket, going to be all good stuff, uh, a rope, scrapper, air balloon, and path to the peak. And you'll notice we're only playing eight water energies. And that's because Ice Rider is actually really similar to things like E-Turn. In the sense where we don't need a lot of energies, uh, mainly because we only take two to attack, similar to E-Turn. So we don't require a lot of water energies, but it's also like, yeah, we discard them after we attack with Ice Rider, but we just put them back from our discard pile uh, onto our Pokemon with Melanie. So realistically, we don't need a lot of energies, and it's also searchable with Capacious Bucket, which is a tool card which we can search out with Shady Dealing. So uh, that's typically how people run Ice Rider. But yeah, very cool. And Teleon Ice Rider, probably a lot of people's favorite deck. Um... An archetype that came out of Chilling Rain. And it might be mine as well. Ice Rider is phenomenal. It's really, really fun. And uh, that's definitely a really great way to play it as well. Uh, we've taken a look at the, the Make Do uh, since Shino version. But uh, we're not going to be taking a look at that today. Uh, we got Dalton Cross, my guy Dalton. Uh, he got fifth from the tournament. He's from the U.S. And he was playing Rillaboom, Eggrow. Um, and this might be the one with Delmize, it is. So uh, this might be my favorite list that people are playing right now in Chilling Rain. Uh, Delmize is literally one of my favorite Pokemon of all time. Um, and I love the card as well. So it's just kind of the newer version of what Rillaboom Eggrow used to be. Um, you know, sometimes people are running the Mewtwo variant. Sometimes some people are just running straight Eggrow with like double and things like that. Uh, but I, I really like it with Delmize. It's just a really fun list. And uh, we have Zarude. We have a Shaman Prism Star as well. We haven't seen Shaman in a long time. So I really like this uh, this list. Uh, there's a lot going on. So I probably, you know, won't do uh, justice trying to explain all the cards. But um, Oren Guru is in here. Crobat. Uh, Dedene, yep. So all kind of good support Pokemon thrown in there. Malolana, Goose Mahala, Sin Kate, because we are running the Tag Call engine with, of course, the two uh, Rillaboom uh, and Alolan Executor GX Tag Teams. So all good stuff. Uh, we are running Path to the Peak in here, um, which actually makes a lot of sense. None of our Pokemon, except for Dedenne and Crobat, have abilities that we need to really utilize that aren't single prizers. And uh, Turfield Stadium also makes sense. 10 Grass, 2 Capture Energies, Escape Rope, Stamp, Energy Recycler. Uh, so yeah, it's a really cool list. It really is. Dalton is obviously a really great player, um, and this isn't one of the most played lists in our format right now, but Grass type has always been one of my favorite uh, archetypes. Like, I just really like Grass decks, like, or I loved Aura Beetle, I liked Egg Rao, I really like Delmize. Uh, anything that's a Grass type list, I'm definitely going to be rooting for it. Uh, so it was definitely super cool to, uh, to see this make, uh, or get, do so well in, in the tournament. Out of 455 players, this is a list that got top 8. Um, so it speaks to how good uh, Dalton really is uh, at the list and, and also how uh, viable that list actually is. So we like to see it. Right above that is poor Nico uh, from, what is this, uh, Italy, who got fourth. He was also playing an ice list, but or sorry, a grass list, but it's a little bit different. It's uh, Decidueye. And uh, yeah, so interesting for sure. It's it's Decidueye and Teleon. This is kind of what people are playing and how they're playing Inteleon. In my opinion, it is really, really good. Uh, Inteleon's probably shady dealings and stuff. That's probably one of the best single prize draw engines in the game. You could run things like, you know, Sinchino Make Do. Uh, we have a Snorlax as well. So there's a lot of great single prize cards to draw more cards. Uh, but I think that Decidueye utilizes the shady dealings and quick shooting Inteleon probably better than any other list might be able to. Um, and everything else in here is pretty good. Again, I'm not going to take too much time to explain it. It's Decidueye. I've like never played Decidueye, uh, so I don't really know much about the list and how exactly it all works. But it's you know for the people that do play Decidueye, you might be interested to see this, and, and you might uh, be happy to see it in top eight, uh, uh, top four actually. I got fourth. I think uh, the only reason that Nico lost as well is because I think he just like conceded his top four match. Like I think he was too late for him or whatnot. Uh, so he might have just been able to win the whole thing, uh, but I think he just like tapped out. Uh, in top four because he is from uh, Italy so maybe it was like an awkward time for him I don't know 
Uh, at third, though, we have Reiji uh, Nishiguchi. Nishiguchi is how you say that. I'm not sure. I'm probably butchering this dude's name, uh, and I apologize. But he's from Japan, and he was playing Malamar VMAX, which uh, also, uh, it's also it's also Mewtwo Dark Box. And we've seen this before. A lot of times people are just kind of combining Malamar VMAX with Mewtwo Dark and, uh, and Moltres V. It's just a, a dark toolbox list, realistically. We have uh, Umbreon and Darkrai, Mega Sableye. And Tyranitar, Malamar V Max, Moltres. So really all of like the best dark type cards in the game, excluding maybe E Turn. And they're all kind of thrown into one list. We have Cricketune, Dedenes, uh, Marshadow, Mew, Mewtwo, and Mew GX, which is a Seki type attacker, but we can utilize the attacks of the dark type Pokemon, so that gives us some coverage. Um, uh, you know, expands our coverage a little bit. And uh, we have red and blue, uh, help us get into some of these uh, the Weavil GXs, I think, is what that card can do. Uh, Cheryl as well, because we have Weavile GX, Boss. Uh, Viridian Forest, Capture Energy, Dark Energy, Attack Call Engine, uh, Reset Stamp. I'm just reading off the cards at this point. But uh, yeah, definitely one of my favorite lists. It uh, definitely seems to be probably one of the more complex lists in the game right now. You can definitely tell that this was a Japanese player who built this list and built and played this list because it's so like intricate um, and, and kind of detailed, whereas some of the more Americanized lists are a little bit more straightforward. Uh, but it is incredible that somebody did so well and, and played so well with a list like this. I will have no idea what I'm doing, to be honest with you. Uh, this list seems like it would definitely take some practice to uh, to get good at, but definitely really cool. Um, and uh, the fact that it does feature and uh, star Malamar V Max just makes me ex extremely happy. It's such a cool card, uh, just a really really cool list. So I got third in the tournament actually, um, and uh, you love to see it. All right, Yang N from Taiwan also, yeah, uh, was playing Urshifu. So we've seen Urshifu do really well in Chill Series the last few weeks since Chilling Rain came out. Uh, it's not going anywhere. This is kind of a different version, but this is kind of the way that people are playing Rapid Strike Urshifu these days. They're playing it with Quick Shooting, Shady Dealings, and Teleon uh, Engine here. So we can draw some cards with Shady Dealings, but we can also increase damage to the bench with Quick Shooting. We have Passimian to increase bench damage. Hoopa is a great single prize dark type attacker to go against things like Shadow Rider, uh, which hits us for weakness. We have Dedenne to draw some cards, Mew to protect our bench. Um, we have Jirachi to get rid of our Psychic Weakness. So a lot of different things going on, but it all goes together really well. It's actually a really fun list, a really consistent list as well. Uh, Telescopic Sight increases our bench damage to V and GX Pokemon. Going to be really good combined with Passimian to knock out uh, things on the bench like Crobat and Dedenne. Really, really powerful as well. Uh, Karate Belt allows us to use that second uh, G-Max Rapid Flow attack for one less energy. Also really, really good. And, uh, yeah, Reset Stamp, Spinner, Ordinary Rod, a lot of good one ofs in the list that you might expect. Uh, four Research, two Boss, two Marnie, and one Erika's. Um, Erika's is seeing a lot more play now than it used to, and uh, I, I can kind of see why. It's it's actually a really good draw supporter, and we don't have to discard cards with it, which makes it that much better. And we typically get to draw more cards than we would if we played Marnie. So it's one of those things where we're not shuffling our hand to our list, we're just drawing cards. So we have... Our research where we discard our hand, draw cards. We have Marnie where we shuffle our hand into our deck and then draw cards. And then we have Iorica's Hospitality, which just lets us draw cards. Um, and uh, each have their own purposes and are, better and, and are better in some cases. So definitely cool. Quick Ball, Level Ball, Pokecom, Evo Incense, all the Pokemon search in here. Uh, two Switch, one Air Balloon. We do have Tower of Waters, which gives our Rapid Strike Pokemon free retreat. Um, and that's going to pretty much make Passimian, Urshifu, Inteleon. Uh, all those things are going to get free retreat. Uh, become kind of free pivots, which is definitely super cool. And then only eight energies in total, uh, but we do have one spinner to find these basic fighting energies. But yeah, four rapid strike and then four basic fighting energies. So it's super cool. Uh, let me know in the comment section below if you still play Urshifu and if you still think it's a top tier list. I think it was pretty successful over in Japan as well uh, during the Japan National Tournament, which just happened. And um, if you guys were able to watch any of those matches, it was very entertaining and those players were all uh, incredibly talented. So Definitely super cool. It also gives us an idea of what might be good uh, once the next set releases in Evolving Skies. But uh, Urshifu, definitely going to be really good, especially when Metacham releases. Uh, Metacham V, which is a phenomenal card. John WT5975 uh, uh, won the tournament. Um, I believe he's from Hong Kong. I believe he didn't list his location, but I think that's where he's from. Um, and he was playing Shadow Rider. And if you guys haven't gotten a chance to go watch the Grand Finals match, I did post it a few days ago. And I highly recommend that you go check out watching that match. It was Shadow Rider here versus the uh, Urshifu list that we saw previously. Um, and that was a pretty fun matchup as well to go watch. So uh, this is very similar. Again, it's Shadow Rider. There's not a lot of different things going on. Uh, the things I do want to mention is we're not running, um, you know, Trev Noir or Sogaleo or, uh, Sogaleo or Lunala or All Creamy. But we are running two Gengar Mimikyu's, which, again, 
again, in my opinion, is probably the most useful uh, addition to Shadow Rider. It, it's extremely good, so it's important, uh, really important in the list. So it makes sense that we're running two here, uh, two to Dene's on top of three Paths to the Peaks, but we have two Mars Shadow. So the high Path to the Peak count, I think, actually really came in clutch for him in this tournament. And uh, we see the one Cresselia, which I do like a lot because it really allows you to have a big advantage if you are going second in some matchups because uh, this is a list that likes to go first a lot of times. But if you do go second, Cresselia is going to be really good to accelerate those energies uh, right off the bat kind of get ahead early game. It's also really easily to just kind of get into on your first turn going second, even though we only run one because we have four Quake Balls, four Pokecom, uh, three Switch, two Air Balloons. So those are all cards that can really help you just get into Cresselia. Uh, so I like it. We also are running Weak Guard Energies, uh, which seems to kind of be the new tech in, in Shadow Rider uh, that's kind of taken over uh, people running Zapdos. And I suppose that's because if you run Zapdos, uh, you also are going to run Aurora Energies. So since we're running special energies uh, that we tim wouldn't typically uh, typically be running with Zapdos, we can just take out Zapdos and run Weak Guards, and that effectively can remove our weakness, so we don't really need to tech Zapdos for Dark-type lists. Uh, that's kind of the idea of it. Uh, let me know in the comment section below whether you think that running Zapdos as a, as a tech, as a prevention against dark type lists is better than just running weak guard um but uh, our winner here our champion uh john decided to just run those weak guard energy so i like it i like it a lot uh, again it's a little bit different than all the other shadow riders we saw but it was successful and it has chrysalia so i like that i really like chrysalia it's super super cool to me and um and yeah that's uh that's all she wrote we're gonna get out of here guys uh and uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video Congrats to everybody that got top 16 this week. Uh, hopefully you guys had a lot of fun. I did too. Don't forget to go and register for Chill Series number 40, the season finale, uh, which is coming up this Wednesday. Uh, it would mean a lot to me if you guys played. Or if you're not playing, get ready for season 5, which is coming out uh, in just a short time now. And, uh, excuse me, be on the lookout uh, for more announcements about season 5 of Chill Series. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. You guys have a good day. I've been Maddie from Chill TCG. You guys have a great uh, rest of your week. And uh, hopefully we'll see you guys Wednesday. If not, I'll see you tomorrow for more videos. All right. Let's get out of here. Peace out, guys. Have a good one.